Oh, there's one thing I had done that I'm gatekeeping because... <gasps> Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to do a fast reaction to Megan Fox's interview on Call Her Daddy. Now, this isn't one of my usual videos. It's going to be extremely rough and there's going to be not much editing involved. So if you're not into rough sorts of videos, then please, I encourage you to skip this one. Now I have went through all of the past surgeries that I have analyzed Megan as having, and you can check all those videos out down below. I put them all in a playlist. And I have went through all the procedures that I listed out to make certain that I still believe she's had those procedures and I do still believe she's had those procedures. Please remember that everything I say in this video is my opinion only. If I refute any of the celebrities' objections of them having plastic surgery, it's only my opinion. So please go ahead and believe that celebrity. Do not go and send my video to them as some kind of way to shame or hate on them. Sending my opinion of their procedures to them really does nothing because they're not ready to admit their work and don't get me in the middle of it, okay? I'd appreciate that. But let's watch and react to this interview with Megan Fox on the Call Her Daddy podcast. There are some girls who have been who have been transparent. I don't want to like bring people yeah. in, but someone like a Kylie has been very transparent. Mm -hmm. She really hasn't though. Kylie hasn't been very transparent. I think you guys all agree that Kylie's been sort of like trickle transparent, if even, which is fine for her. I'm not saying that she needs to be any different. I've long past gotten over the fact that, you know, celebrities won't talk about their work. And when they do, it's only some of their work, but to call Kylie transparent is inaccurate. She's, she's not transparent. That is not helping her. People are, women are still brutally dragging her just the same uh -huh. and totally undeserved. She's a beautiful, healthy, young, gorgeous girl. And I actually feel for whatever reason, very protective when I watch other girls go through this, yeah. I want to defend them or go to war for them. But okay, I'll go through. Okay. Here's things I haven't done that I have been accused of doing. Okay. And then I'll confirm the things I have done. Okay. I've never had a facelift of any kind. As far as her saying she's had no facelifts, I really want to give her the benefit of the doubt that she's not just blatantly lying to everyone. And I'm going to say, maybe it's possible the surgeons called it something else. Maybe it's possible that they called whatever procedure she had, which was actually a facelift, something else. They didn't call it a facelift. And so she feels that she can tell everyone else, well, I didn't have a facelift. That's the only conclusion I can come to, to where she's not really lying. And not just once. The mid facelift first, when the one that narrowed her eyes, and then later, the one that she had just a few years back that looked very much like an endoscopic ponytail facelift, which leaves no scars by the ears generally. Again, I am not saying that she is lying. I am not slandering her. I'm saying that I analyzed her as having a facelift and I still believe she's had one. So no mid face lift, no like lateral brow lift, although I would like one or no regular brow lift. Um, I've never done threads. From my research and from checking back with my mentor, we both agree that there's ample evidence of a brow lift. This is just my interpretation of Megan's photos, multiple hundreds of photos. I have researched them. That's not because of some moral thing. I just don't really believe they work. And I'm also afraid that they would interfere when I do need to have a facelift. Mm -hmm. But I am very tempted to go have my eyebrows snatched like all the way. I want I want that look sometimes. That seems fun. And you can do it on a lunch break. And I see why it's so tempting. And I I have researched it, have not done it yet. Okay. Um, I've never had this done. What I don't know. The threads disclaimer is interesting just because like I don't know why she feels the need to tell people she's researched something. Um, her brows are super high right now. So it's strange to me that she says she loves that look or wants that look or alludes to wanting that look because there's nothing they can actually do for her brows at this point. They're so extremely high, including the tails of her brows, especially the tails of her brows. Oh, buck, buckle fat, buckle, buckle fat, buckle fat, buckle fat. I've never had that done. I'll never have any fat removed. I'm a very like lean. 
I don't have her down as having buckle fat removal. I think that's something that others accused her of having. I don't think that I've ever said she had buckle fat removal. Person that doesn't have enough body fat or fat in my face, so I will only ever put fat in. I will never be taking fat out, which leads me to I've never had any like liposuction or body contouring or anything like that. I've never had what are other things you can have, but implant. See, I wish Alex wouldn't have interrupted her there because – I think she was coming to what she was going to say, which maybe would have been, I did have fat transfer to my face, which makes a lot of sense because she said she's a very lean person. I think that if Alex hadn't interrupted her and started suggesting things that maybe she would have come to that herself. If I was the interviewer, I would have asked her that. I would have said, how about putting fat in? Because a lot of people don't mind admitting to fat transfer or fat injections. I mean, I, I would be so flattered if somebody thought I had a BBL. <laughs> that I, ass, if, Megan. I, if I could, I would. I, I, don't have, I don't have the extra body fat. I would get it done if I could. That dump and, truck. <laughs> and that, that surgery is such a hard one to recover from. It's so insane. Oh. It's basically like three months you have to lay flat on your face. I could never You're be You're bruised for an eternity. <sighs> if I were to ever do that, I would come out with, I, I would be like, if I'm going to survive that surgery, you're going to give me an ass that's like an anomaly. Like I'm you're, I'm going to walk through a park and I'm going to turn around and everyone is going to be whispering and laughing and talking because they're like, what Damn. What are we looking at? Like circus freak. That If I'm going through that healing process, you're going to do I it. I want that. I'm not coming out with like, a, oh, did she been, has she been like really hitting the gym lately? Extra squats. No, I want it to be massive. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to stop people in their tracks. I feel like she's really trying to be funny and I get it. I know probably people think this is really funny. Um, but like it I don't know. I don't I don't particularly like the humor around this for some reason. I, I just I feel like it's kind of like this red herring. I don't know if that's the term for it where she's like trying to be funny to throw off like what's really going on, which is, you know, she's admitted in the past like she has body dysmorphia. This might be something that is underlying all these things. Like when she does things, she does them big. Okay, okay, but I don't have the body fat to do that, so that's never gonna happen. But at the time, when when in the future you can take donated fat from people, I will be doing that, and you will be seeing this situation. The situation go um, down in the park. Okay, what you have? So yeah, I don't think you can do that yet. But it's weird that she's saying that, just because to have enough body fat to do that, all you have to do is gain five or seven pounds, and then they extract it, and then they put it into your butt. I never had her down as having a BBL, but I did have her down for having some fat transfer to the area and also some liposuction. So liposuction and taking that fat and transferring it to the area without it being a full BBL, which I could see her saying she never had a BBL and not counting fat transfer as a BBL. Like I said, I had my boobs done when I was 21 or 22. Okay. I had them redone after I was done breastfeeding my kids mm -hmm. because I, I don't know where they went, but they went. And then I had to have them redone very recently because the first set, I didn't have enough body fat to disguise. You could see the rippling of the implant. So I had to switch them out mm -hmm. to this set. I don't like surgery. My body does not react well to general anesthesia. Okay. And so when I go to have a surgery, it's a very big deal. And I have my, all my doctors have to meet with me before and have to tell me if they've seen any omens, if they saw any owls, crows, if anyone stepped on a spider, if any, if there are any dead insects. Like my doctors have to go through this with me because I'm very afraid of dying under general anesthesia. So I don't take surgery lightly and therefore I have not had many of them because of that. So that's probably a saving grace that I have this paranoia or this fear because God knows what I would have been up to. Do your doctors think you're insane? They're like, oh, this No, they bitch. love me. No, they love <laughs> like, me. They yes, I saw an owl, Megan. Let's reschedule. No, we all, we all, and by the way, I'm like, I'll still pay for the surgery. Just do not also make sure the music playlist, no music comes up that reminds you of like your ex-girlfriend or an ex-wife or anything that's going to make you upset because you are the surgeon. You need to be in a good headspace. If you have a with your wife do not come in for surgery i go through all of these protocols you should make us all like a list of like I, a little pre-op you situation. don't want to any surgery is a risk to your life i don't care what anyone says right. that's the truth mm -hmm. going under general anesthesia is a risk to your life yep. so um when i had to go i think it's something that hollywood and the entertainment industry really perpetuates as being super superstitious um because I think people out there feel very out of control. So all these things that they look for in signs, magic, and things like that, not that there isn't any validity. It's just that when you see it kind of take over someone's mind, like with Megan, it's like it's a sign that there's just 
a lot going on psychologically there. And if that's really true and that's not just an entertaining story, then I mean, that's, that's not, that's not a good sign. That's a sign you're not ready for surgery. So true general anesthesia is dangerous and you should take all the recommended precautions that your doctor gives you. Um, you should definitely tell them all the medications you're on and follow all of their aftercare instructions. Um, but should you go to these extreme lengths? No. So um, when I had to go in for this set, I was like, look, if you're going to put me to sleep, if I'm going to be sick for two months from the general anesthesia, if I'm going to feel, if I'm going to go through, because I'm not fully ever asleep. So my soul's like fighting on the surgical table to wake up. It's a very traumatizing experience for me. I was like, I better wake up with the biggest boobs you can fit in my body. <laughs> and that is what he said he did. And they're not even that big. They're a 32D. That is not a 32D cup size. She's easily an F or a G. You should get accurately measured for your bra because whenever people start throwing these cup sizes out, it drives breast surgeons crazy because they're asking for these cup sizes that celebrities are saying they are, when in reality, there are much bigger cup sizes than that, especially if they have implants because the implants are bigger than natural breasts. If like if he could have gone bigger, I would have had him go bigger because I don't like surgery. And the fact that I had to do it, I was like, I want a reward for the suffering I have to go through. I don't want to wake up with a full B cup. There's no f point in that. I'm not doing it. Right. You want. I, want I said, I want I don't care what's on trend. Give me 1990s stripper. That's what I want. And he did it. Girl, you look amazing. Thank you. <laughs> and then um, I had my nose done when I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've literally been accused of having like six, seven, eight rhinoplasty surgeries, which is impossible. Your nose would get necrosis and fall off. Right. Um, I haven't had a rhinoplasty since I was, I'm going to say 23. It's been well over a decade. Okay. I haven't, I've not touched my nose since then. So I have her down as having two rhinoplasties. I'd have to check the timeline of the rhinoplasties. For sure, I had one in her 20s. And I probably had one a bit later in her 20s. I think it's funny that she said she had one rhinoplasty. And then she says, well, I haven't had one since this time in my 20s, which kind of alludes to having more than one, if that makes sense. I could be wrong. Comment down below what you think. We didn't contour my nose. Yes. <laughs> we didn't no, contour did. my nose. No, we didn't. Your nose looks tiny. Fuck. Shut we didn't contour Jenna, it. You're fired. Should we contour it half? Should we show everyone how I contour Wait, my you nose? You, your nose no. looks... No. I can make it tiny like a little elven princess. I make it so small. Within within one inch of its life, I contour it. And so I think people think I keep constantly working on it. It is just the contour. I can't believe... I can't believe I'm doing an interview without nose contour on. I'm traumatized. You don't understand what a big deal this is. No, this no, is no. like me not having done my eyebrows. It's very scary for me. I'm traumatized that you think that your nose won't look good right now because I'm no. like the... No. Like. No. I like to <laughs> I like to contour it down until it's just nostrils like Voldemort. Can just no nose, <laughs> just just two holes here. No, wait, after this, can you no teach bridge. me how you contour your nose and I'll do it next to you? Yeah, but I'm I'm freaking out no, that no, no. I'm not. I don't have it on. You look so gorgeous. You're gonna keep going. This is good for okay, you. Okay, this, this is good for you. Hysteria, craziness over not having her nose contoured again is meant to be funny and deflect. But if you look at the message that's under it, is there's like this extreme obsession with having her nose look as small as possible, which again points to something bigger than all of this, meaning that I think it's definitely possible she's still very preoccupied with the way she looks and changing her face, which is fair. I mean, I'm not saying that I am not victim or fall victim to that at times, but we should look beyond like the attempt at humor and and see like what's deeper and that's very telling, I think, is her reaction right there to realizing that they forgot to contour her nose. Okay. So you've had your nose done, you've had your and what, Botox and filler? That's Yeah, that's it, right? Okay, so Botox and filler, at least she's admitting to that. And under the filler umbrella, she could be including fat, which a lot of people kind of classify fat transfer anywhere on their body as being filler. And a lot of surgeons who you talk to do think of fat as filler as well. So maybe she's kind of qualifying that right there. Um, as far as Botox, yes, it's very obvious. You know, she has no lines on her face. It makes sense she's admitting to Botox. I don't think at this point anyone is denying 
their own Botox, right? I think that's become something that people are admitting. Oh, there's one thing I had done that I'm gatekeeping because. <gasps> Sorry. What? It was, it was really good. And it's not a known like plastic surgery. People don't even really know about it. Will you tell me off camera? Yeah. You don't need it. I don't think. Really? You, you're not going to want it. I wanted it very badly and I need to do it. And it's something that. Can you give us a hint? No. No. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so that's it. Yeah, it's actually not that much. Okay, so I know you guys want me to comment on the gatekeeping procedure. So what I think it might be is she got eyebrow hair transplants. The reason I think it's that is because it's kind of not really a known plastic surgery procedure. And the way she said plastic surgery, she was kind of saying like, it's not really plastic surgery. So I think it's that. And she was rumored to have gotten those maybe about 10 years ago. And the way she said it was like, she's like, I needed it. So I kind of think women always feel like we need our eyebrows. I mean, a lot of, not just women. Anyways, and then she kind of looks, she peers and stares at Alex and she's like, I don't think you need it. I don't think something like that. And I think because of the way she stared at Alex's face, I think it's a facial procedure. I don't think it's anything to do with down there. And I'm not going to say the word because I don't want to be censored by YouTube. So yeah, I don't think it's a rejuvenation surgery or anything. And then there was also this audio earlier in the Call Her Daddy podcast that you're not able to see. You can only watch it on Spotify and there's no way to screen record it where she says, I plucked out all my eyebrows. And when you do that, when you pluck your eyebrows, by the way, for anyone that's ever going to do this, if you do that, when you're sick or your immune system is down, those hairs don't grow back. So plucked my eyebrows out. Most of them never grew back. So this is something she said that's kind of foreshadowing the need for these eyebrow hair transplants. Let me know in the comments below what you think this gate kept procedure is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, make sure that you go and watch my most recent celebrities who haven't had plastic surgery video. Remember, I really need your likes and your comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>